Hello everyone, welcome to Booth Western Art Museum. My name is Patty Petrie Dees and I'm really excited to be here with you today. If you're not familiar with the booth, I'll share a few facts with you. We are the second largest art museum in the state of Georgia and we house the largest permanent collection of American Western art on exhibition in the entire United States. That's right. Pretty amazing here in Cartersville, Georgia. We are a Smithsonian affiliate and we recently won an international award for our live interactive virtual field trips Hooray! Well, today I'm excited to share with you some highlights from our collection. And I would like to do that by highlighting one of our programs uh, that is called Booth Blazers. So we're focusing on elements of art and principles of design with this normally with our elementary audiences. It's really elements of art. I would also like to take a moment to say that I have a co-presenter, Ms. Donna Shiver, artist extraordinaire and program coordinator here at the booth that's gonna join us at the end of the program and show you how to do a really cool drawing. So let's begin with something that's very important to us here at the Booth Museum. Uh, we'd like to provide a proper land acknowledgement because our museum sits on the land that the Cherokee Indigenous people and their elders called their homelands. So and we would like to acknowledge and pay respect to them for that. We have a lot of artwork by historic and contemporary American Western artists, and that includes Indigenous artists and artifacts. So today I will be highlighting some elements of art and particular works that I've chosen from our collection just to show you how we engage with students and hope that you can see us and uh, uh, hopefully want to utilize this as a resource in your classroom and for your students in the future. We know elements of art, it's embedded in our psyche as art educators, so I'm not going to spend any more time on looking at this. Let's move on to our first artwork. This is an artwork by Ed Mel and it's called Storm Flowers. And if you had to guess which element of art I would highlight in this piece, what do you think? Hmm. Well, I like to highlight shape with this piece because you can see um, at, that there are some very um, hard lines and geometric shapes that jump out at you right away. And if you ask students, that's what they begin to identify. They see those tri triangular shapes, crystals, shards. We've heard those terms used by students before. And so Ed Mel has chosen to use geometric shapes in lieu of organic shapes, which we normally would find in desert flowers like we see here and in nature. So it's really fun to have a conversation with students about why the artist made this choice. And it's also fun to look at the painting right next to Ed Mel because this artist does a very similar thing. This is by Kim Wiggins. It's called The Eve of St. Francis. And where you would expect to find geometric shapes, you instead have organic shapes. You have organic, you also have line and form. And you can see that here, right? So it's interesting to compare these two pieces side by side and discuss the artist's choice. And with Kim Wiggins, you can see with all of this line and form and organic, um, uh, the organic line of form, we see lots of movement in his artistic style. Now let's take a walk around this beautiful piece of artwork called Walking Horse by Leo Sewell. And you can see this is a great one to talk about found objects. In fact, can you take a look there and see, can you identify anything in there? I'm sure you can. Uh, lots of items to look at. Leo Sewell grew up next to a junkyard and thanks to his mom, he was encouraged to be creative with what he found. Uh, and this is a result. Uh, he is a, a, he is a um, very well-known sculptor today. This is a great piece to talk about texture. If we take a closer look at it, uh, you can see there, there is lots of texture in this piece, even though it's made out of aluminum uh, as a primary metal. And we do identify that with students. We talk about that. We ask them how they think it would feel. So we're looking at tactile texture. So we hear the words um, shiny and smooth and bumpy uh, and you know lots of other descriptive terms. If they could touch it, what would it feel like? So this is a good one to also compare to visual texture that you could find in a lot of paintings. Um, throughout our museum. Now, this is a given. I've already popped up the word foreground here for you guys. So we know we're going to talk about space in this painting by Ann Coe called Suburban Ranchette, the new watering hole. And Ann Coe um, is very active in um, conservation work, uh, land conservation and nature. So you can see that reflected in her artwork. So that's a good discussion to have with students uh, about the artist's voice. Um, and we can see that really, this piece really exemplifies her love of nature and her concern about land conservation. But 
This is also a great piece just to do simple VTS, visual thinking strategies. Now we don't have time to do that today, but it's a great one to do with students. Uh, then we can also talk about the elements of uh, different elements in this piece. There's a great line that leads you into this piece with the horse's neck going up to uh, the focal point of the painting, which is the rancher. Um, and we're gonna focus though on space, which is foreground, middle ground and background. And in the background, if you take a look there, you can see there's a golf course and oh, that really hits home with the message that Anco is presenting um, and expressing in this piece of art. And my favorite element of art of all, color. I love color. And here we can see uh, this beautiful artwork by Fritz Scholder, who is an indigenous artist that was active during the era of Andy Warhol and the whole pop art scene. But uh, what's different about Fritz Scholder is that he really stepped out from other Native American or indigenous artists at the time who were being trained in very traditional methods and chose to go a more in a more express, expressionistic path. He really wanted to um, challenge the stereotypes of indigenous people. And he was doing that with his artwork. And here you can see a blue eagle being represented. An eagle is often sacred to many uh, indigenous peoples. And we can see that he's taken a very contemporary look at it. In fact, the students will often place a very realistic image of an eagle go next to it and we'll have a discussion about the artist's choice of color and shape and form and have you ever seen a really a blue eagle why do you think he made that choice uh, so it's great to lead into a discussion of color of course the color wheel and color theory primary colors secondary tertiary you know complementary color schemes lots of discussions we can have using this artwork so now it's time for you to have some fun with Miss Donna. Donna Shiver is going to lead you in an exercise in drawing an eagle using this as an inspiration. You're going to need a piece of paper, a pencil, some crayons or colored pencils and a Sharpie. So go ahead and grab those and I will come back and say goodbye to you guys after Miss Donna finishes with her drawing lesson. And it's a great example of what we do with our elementary students. All right, I'll be back, enjoy. So my pencil sketch begins with a contour line drawing and thinking about basic shapes. The circle, the square, the triangle, the rectangle that will help me construct the eagle in his desert environment. I'm looking at straight line like in the cactus versus organic line in the cloud structures. This addition of yellow here is my uh, idea that I can create somewhat of a complementary color scheme with purple as I begin to color in the bird, just using crayon, pulling a middle orange crayon, just something that's somewhere in that middle value range. Then I lean more toward a red orange crayon to create, try to create some depth in the bird, adding that to the beak and just under the wing structures, just to create some weight too. That middle orange or middle tone of uh, orange crayon can be added to the desert environment. Again, pull that red-orange crayon to add greater depth. Then I can pull any more of that into the bird that I want to. A bright blue sky helps to delineate the organic cloud structures. I can pull a blue-green for the cactus. Uh, curly sort of pink clouds here, just sort of curly lines. More purple added to the bird just to give additional depth. Now pull a Sharpie marker out to outline your bird, uh, going over all of those, those zigzag lines and all of those different lines in the environment. Add some speckles just to give some texture to that desert environment. Pricklies all over your cactus, little feathers, little lines that can help to uh, give some detail to the bird. The organic line in the clouds, birds in the sky. Uh, a little bit of additional sort of red orange there in places and that will just about wrap us up. All right, okay, welcome back everyone. I hope you had fun with that drawing. Um, what I'd like to do now is uh, just share with you um, our thank you slide that um, acknowledges the copyright of our artists and artwork, but also provides our contact information for you. And if you have any questions, please, please do get in touch with us. We're happy to answer any questions uh, for you. Also wanna make sure that you know that there is an educator guide available for you in the Dropbox, or you can access it on our website at boothmuseum.org. And also wanna remind you that we do provide virtual field trips. They're live and they're fun, and they tie into lots of different topics for you 
If you're interested, we would love to make contact with you. So thank you again for allowing me to present today. And I hope I get to see you again soon. Goodbye.